Hey everyone, Sam here, welcome. Just recently I went to Thailand. I love traveling and I took my paints with me. So it sounds a bit cliche, but I really just wanted to paint a tropical beach scene with some palm trees on it. What are you gonna do? Anyway, I painted this artwork here, outdoors on plain air. And in this video, I'll show you how I painted it and some of my other adventures in Thailand. It was pretty uh, tricky painting outdoors in the tropical heat. The sweat was pouring down my back most of the time and I got sunburnt. But you know, that's what us artists have to go through sometimes. <laughs> Click the link below, there's some written notes that accompany this video if you want to see how I painted it and enjoy the video. So I'm in Thailand at the moment. I love it here. I love the weather. It's nice and warm. And uh, the food here is amazing. Tons of fresh fruit available. So I love my fruit. The landscape here, if you're a landscape artist, there's so much here to paint. Like I'm so glad I brought my paint with me. I've been on the beach and I wanted to paint a beach scene, especially with some palm trees on it. So in this video, I went to Kata Beach, which is on the island of Phuket in Thailand. I'll show you how I painted a tropical beach scene outdoors on plain air. I'm using a Strada easel, which is perfect for traveling with. So if you check the link below, there's a link there to their website. And I hope you enjoy this video. So this is Kata Beach. It's a typical Thai beach, which is what I was looking for. Nice and sandy, nice weather, palm trees and I was specifically looking to paint a palm tree in my painting. So I found this corner of the beach and plonked myself down and set my easel and my video camera so I could film it and started painting. Now it wasn't the most ideal composition but I just wanted to capture the atmosphere of the place and it was actually the first time I painted a palm tree. I painted this artwork on a small 19cm by 30cm canvas panel which I prepared back home in New Zealand and I'm using a Strada easel to paint with. Using a round brush I start sketching out my composition with burnt sienna mixed with liquin and I'm using liquin as it helps speed up the drying time and improves the flow of the paint so liquin is great for plain air painting. The colours I'm using include titanium white cadmium yellow deep, yellow oxide, burnt sienna, quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, cobalt teal and phthalo green. I love the idea of documenting my travels in paintings. They're sort of like a diary of where I've been and I just love to be able to just rock up anywhere in the world somewhere and just be able to paint it. That would be awesome. The first thing I do when I'm about to start a plain air painting, and this applies to wherever I paint it in the world, is I look for where my darkest tones are. So in this case it's the shadows in the trees and the palm fronds, and then the shadows in the distant headland. So I paint these first. I paint the shadows in the palm fronds with a mixture of ultramarine blue, yellow oxide and burnt sienna. I'm using a number six flat brush which I use pretty much throughout the painting. The shadows in the midground are more of a sort of bluey colour, so I mix ultramarine blue with some burnt sienna and quinacridone magenta and titanium white to create a mid-tone. Now that I've got my dark tones in, I work on the sky. I start by painting the cloud highlights, which is just titanium white mixed with a bit of burnt sienna and a tiny bit of yellow oxide and I also paint the highlights of the waves in the sea as well. 
Next I paint the cloud shadows which I'm using the same mixture as I did for the shadows in the midground but just a lot more titanium white. So I'm still using ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, quinacridone magenta and a lot of titanium white. And because I'm using these same colours it looks more harmonious in the painting. I paint the sky with a mixture of ultramarine blue, titanium white and I add a little bit of thalo green just to add some richness to that blue. Next I work on the sea and I'm using a number 6 flat brush. For the main part of the sea I mix ultramarine blue with some titanium white and a tiny bit of burnt sienna. Then for the lighter areas of the water I mix in cobalt teal and a little thalo green to give it that turquoise hue that's in the water. I paint the shadows of the trunks of the palm trees with a mixture of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and quinacridone magenta and then I paint the sand with a combination of yellow oxide, burnt sienna and titanium white. So now to work on the leaves and foliage that's in this scene. So first of all I'll paint the trees in the distant headland and because they're further away they're not going to be as vibrant so I need to desaturate my colours. So I mix a combination of ultramarine blue and yellow oxide and I add a bit of cadmium yellow deep as well to the mixture as well as titanium white. If my green's still looking a bit too saturated, I can just knock it back a bit with some burnt sienna. Thailand's just an awesome country. The, uh, there's so much to paint, the, the colours are different, so you've got, you've got lots of different uh, vibrant greens and uh, you know, things like palm trees, banana plants, there's just so much here. So I'm really glad I brought my, uh, my paints with me. So now for the fun part, painting the coconut palm. I've left a gap in the sky around the palm so that I can paint the leaves first and then fill in the negative spaces afterwards. I paint the palm fronds using a mixture of cadmium yellow deep, ultramarine blue, titanium white and burnt sienna. And then I can also increase the saturation of that green by adding a little thalo green and make it look more organic with a bit of yellow oxide. By this stage I've added more foliage to the tree behind and then I come back to the palm fronds and start filling in those negative spaces with my sky mix. You may have noticed in my beach scene that I didn't include any people on it. Well that's because I wanted to create the illusion of a tropical paradise and a deserted beach. Now that the painting is coming together I start adding some highlight on top of those waves by just mixing titanium white with a little bit of yellow oxide. I start adding more layers to the palm fronds and mixing some lighter greens. I'm still using the same colour combination but just making it lighter in areas by increasing the tones so it looks like it's in full sun. I also use my shadow mix from what I started with earlier to re-emphasise the palm fronds that are in shadow. I make little flicks with my paintbrush to give those palm fronds a more feathered look. I finish up the painting by refining the overall shapes and forms in the scene. Now the composition isn't that brilliant in this scene, it's probably a bit heavy on the right side but I just really wanted to capture the atmosphere of the place that I was painting. If I was going to do a studio painting of this, which I may do, I could definitely use this plein air painting as a colour study to refer to but I'd definitely spend a lot more time redesigning the composition so it would be much more balanced and harmonious. But despite this, this painting is special to me because I just really wanted to capture the atmosphere of the location I visited in Thailand. I think painting outdoors is a wonderful way of documenting where you've travelled to and in my opinion better than a photograph. I love all the food here, it's so tasty. 
Yum. Have you seen these growing at the side of the road? They're called sensitive plants. They're pretty cool. So as you can see, this is the, uh, I guess, the movie set to the, uh, the beach. A little bit different because obviously the film wasn't overrun with tourists. <laughs> they were far cry from the uh, tranquil paradise that they portrayed the, uh, this beach on the movie, The Beach. So this is what they forgot to put in the beach movie. All the hordes of tourists and speedboats everywhere. Totally overrun with tourists. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if so give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also don't forget the link to the written notes that accompany this video and also there's some links to my social media sites which include Facebook, Instagram, Steemit and Minds. Until then I'll see you in the next video.